you get the idea. It's not rocket surgery. Just buy stuff when it's on sale. It's so pretty. Nope, it's perfect. Mm, 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 mm. This, the flavor is delicious. This is, mm hmm. Yep. Mm. Good morning, my friends. My name is Mindy, and I have lost over 120 pounds on Wegovy Munjaro Semaglutide Compound, and I am now back on Wegovy again. This week, I really wanna to talk to you guys about how I stick to a high protein diet on a budget. I think that there is this massive misconception that eating healthy is expensive, that it's only for rich people. And let me tell you, I am far from rich. I would say we're probably firmly rooted in middle class, lower middle class. We are definitely paycheck to paycheck people. Well, once I started working, we got a little bit less so, but we've got a lot of debt. We don't really have a lot of extra money to throw around. And so when I started this healthy journey, I knew I was gonna have to find a way to do it that would work for our budget. We only have a hundred dollar grocery budget every week. That means that we spend approximately $50 per person to eat a high protein lifestyle. Now, when I say high protein, I try to get about 30% or more of my calories from protein every single day. A lot more than the average person. <laughs> and I do eat meat. I think that a lot of the, you know, health food is expensive movement has really gained a lot of momentum with the advent of TikTok and Instagram and all of the influencers that are peddling supplements and really expensive protein powders and telling you that you have to eat organic and you need to eat all of these really expensive, healthy foods when it's really not necessary. I, I've talked a lot about my diet and I've talked a lot of trash about keto and low carb and things like that because I just don't think they're sustainable, at least not for me. For the majority of people, they're not sustainable. If you're going to lose weight successfully and keep it off, you really, for the most part, need to be losing weight in a way that you're going to be able to eat for the rest of your life. And for me, that definitely isn't low carb or keto or carnivore or any of those super hyper restrictive diets. If you have health concerns that demand that you eat in those ways, that's, you're not the people that I'm talking to. I'm just talking to the majority of Americans who are looking to lose some weight, who think that low carb is the only way to do that. I have lost 120 pounds eating plenty of carbohydrates. Right now, I try to get 30% of my calories from protein, and then the rest of my 70%, I try to split fairly evenly between carbs and fat. So 35% carbs, 35% fat. Most of the time, I end up being a little higher on the protein and a little higher on the carbs and a little lower on the fat. I'm usually sitting right around 30 to 31% fat. I'm not always successful at that, but I'm not a huge macro counting person. I'm far more interested in just making sure that I get plenty of protein because protein is very satiating and it is extremely important for weight loss and body recomposition and things like that. I've been thinking about doing a video where I talk about why protein is so important. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, please let me know down in the comments and I will be sure to start working on that. If you're trying to stick to a budget, the first place that that starts is with meal planning. And I meal plan every single week. I have meal planning videos on this channel. If you've never seen them before, definitely take a look. I talk about how I calculate my calories and I go into my spreadsheet that I use and all that kind of good stuff. So I don't wanna get into that in too much detail because that's a whole other video. <laughs> as far as sticking to a budget, even before I start putting together a meal plan, I take a look at grocery store ads for the week. So I am lucky enough to live in an area where I am very close to three different grocery stores. Well, technically four, but the fourth one is a little further away and I rarely go to it. So I live close to an HEB, I live fairly close to a Randall's, and I live close to a Walmart, 
And then lastly, I also have a Sprouts that's fairly close to me. Randall's in particular, which is also Safeway, Vons, I think is the same store. They are in general, very expensive, but they have every week really good specials on meat. And if you watched their sale flyers, I look on their website every week and I see what's on sale. I also have their app because they have digital only discounts and digital only sales. So if you don't have the app for your store, definitely download it because that will help you a lot. So I always take a look at what kind of meats are on sale at Randall's, at HEB, not so much at Walmart, because uh, Walmart doesn't usually have great sales on meat. But I will take a look at what's on sale and when stuff is on sale, so chicken breast, chicken thighs, I always buy boneless, skinless because I'm lazy. I would save even more money if I bought whole chicken, but I'm just, I'm not that girl. I'm not in my homestead area yet. I always buy boneless, skinless. And when it goes on sale at Randall's, it's as little as $1.75 a pound for boneless, skinless chicken breast or boneless, skinless chicken thighs. 93% lean ground beef is very expensive when you don't buy it on sale. But when it's on sale at Randall's, it's only $3.99 a pound. So when it goes on sale, I buy my limit, which is 10 pounds. I package it up and I stick it in the freezer. That way I'm not spending five to seven dollars a pound to get the same ground beef that I can get for $3.99. And on those weeks, I may end up spending a little bit more on my grocery budget, but then on other weeks when meat isn't on sale, then I have that in my freezer to pull from and I don't have to spend a ton of money on meat. So that's where I start with my meal planning. I always make sure I know what's on sale and I buy lots of meat and keep my freezer stocked. I live in an apartment with a teeny tiny apartment refrigerator and my freezer is pretty much full of meat almost all the time. That's what I keep in my freezer. I don't really store a lot else in my freezer. It's pretty much just meat. Then I will go through usually my macro friendly food app. If you aren't familiar with macro friendly food, it's a high protein recipe service. She sends new recipes every month and there's a database of over 900 high protein, low calorie meals. If that's something that you're interested in, feel free to take a look at my link down in the description. It will save you 10%, but even without the discount, I only pay $30 every three months, so $10 a month for that service. And it saves me a ton of time and energy. All of the recipes are very good. They don't take any real special ingredients or anything like that. The other thing with sales is I'll take a look at the rest, even like not just meat, but I'll take a look at the pantry items and see what's on sale because I tend to use the same pantry items over and over and over again. And oftentimes like Randall's, for example, a couple weeks ago had sale on canned tomatoes. They were only like 80 cents a can. And I use a ton of diced tomatoes, crushed tomatoes, tomato sauce, things like that. So I bought several cans of each. And then the next time I use a canned tomato, I don't need to spend $1.50 on a can of tomatoes because I got them for 80 cents. You get the idea. It's not rocket surgery. Just buy stuff when it's on sale. So then once I make my meal plan, I make my grocery list and I get to the store and I stick to my list. Don't be an impulse shopper. That used to be me. I know a lot of people have a lot more success with avoiding impulse shopping when they do like a curbside type shopping experience. I actually like going to the grocery store every week. I'm a weirdo, I know, but I like getting my groceries every week um, and taking time to get out of the house and go to the grocery store and walk around and people watch and listen to the music. And just, I just like the grocery store for a lot of other people. I know it causes you anxiety. So don't, if you're a person that's gonna impulse shop and spend a lot of money on impulse items, then do a curbside order and pick it up. Especially if you're going to go to multiple grocery stores. That's my other tip. If you're going to save a lot of money by buying from multiple grocery stores, it might be worth it to make a couple different trips to different grocery stores to get things. I almost always end up going to both Randall's and HEB because if stuff is on sale at Randall's, I'm only getting what's on sale at Randall's. I'm not going to buy my produce at Randall's where it's two to three times as much as it is at HEB. That's the biggest tip, obviously, for saving money is you're going to want to make sure that you're shopping the sales and you're making your meal plan fit to what's on sale instead of trying to make your groceries fit what you want to eat. I hope that makes sense. All right. I'm sitting in the HEB parking lot talking to you. People are looking at me like I'm a weirdo. Let's go inside and get some groceries. <laughs> Speaking of carbs, 
Yum. Oh, they're still warm. <laughs> Another money saving tip, if your grocery store has a bulk spices department, this is a fantastic place to pick up spices for cheap when you only need a tablespoon or something. So just fill up a bag with however much you want, take it home, use it. No, Ooh. trying not to make a mess and I'm doing a bad job. Oh no, oh, oh no. It's fine. Got my paprika. 48 cents. We have a macaroni and cheese this week. Yeah. Cheese, please. Don't sleep on the canned veggies. These are perfectly healthy for you, often way less expensive than fresh, and they won't go bad before you use them. Also, I can't get these fresh, and these are the best green beans. Fight me. Okay, I'm pulling a Hail Mary. I'm doing a Monte Cristo French toast bake this week. Oh, so good. Egg bake, whatever, I don't know. What it, I can't remember the name of the recipe. It's a macro-friendly food recipe and it's freaking delicious. It's free, I'll have it down in the, rest, in the description. The recipe called for 12 ounces of Canadian bacon. Canadian bacon can get a little expensive, but it's low in fat, high in protein, great, right? Well, well, I saw this diced ham, which if you know, Monte Cristos usually have ham in it. This ham is 98% fat free with 10 grams of protein per serving. And this whole package is 12 ounces and it's the same price as this seven ounce package of Canadian bacon. It's a little lower in calories, slightly lower in protein per gram, but not by enough, like less than a hundredth of a gram or something like that. So. I'm gonna get this diced ham instead, and I think it's gonna be delicious, and it's gonna be less work for me because I won't have to cut it up. Cheap source of protein. On its own, disgusting. Mixed with regular rice, delicious. Utilize your frozen vegetables too. These are picked when they are totally fresh, already prepared for you, and all you have to do is cook them, and they stay good in your freezer forever, pretty much. Yum, yum, yum. Under budget. Bam, bam, bam. Well, that was a pretty successful haul-ish. <laughs> so I had a couple of unexpected changes that I needed to make because of unavailable items. I was originally just gonna buy a small container of egg whites because I don't need that giant one. So that was more than I, expected to spend, but we saved almost $4 buying that thing of ham instead of the Canadian bacon. And now I'm not gonna have just two ounces of random Canadian bacon hanging out in my fridge until it either becomes dog treats or trash. The other thing is, is that I was going to be stocking up on some pork tenderloin to put in my freezer because it was on sale for the first time in a long time. It was only $1.99 a pound. And of course I got here and they were completely sold out. I asked an employee and he was like, yeah, we ordered some more, but they shorted us. So we don't even have any more to put out. There's another HEB that's closer to my house, but it's also kind of a nightmare to get in and out of. I may try to talk Richard into going over there so that I can pick up a couple of pork tenderloins to have in the freezer. Now the good thing is is that I do still have one pork tenderloin in my freezer so I'm not completely out but I really don't want to miss out on that sale. I wanted to go into a little bit more about how I customize my meal plan around the food that I'm able to find. I use macro-friendly food for like 90% of my meals and they have a search feature in there where you can search by ingredient. So if I know that pork is on sale or I have pork in my freezer to use when meat is not on sale, or chicken or whatever, I will just go into the search and I will type into the ingredient, chicken, pork, beef, whatever, and I'll search through those recipes and I'll just pick one. If you do not have macro-friendly food, you can do the same thing in Pinterest. So just type in high protein pork recipe or high protein chicken recipe or high protein whatever recipe. Love the simplicity of using macro-friendly food because I know I only have that one place to search 
and I know that it's not gonna have any crazy weird ingredients. I've literally never had a recipe of hers that I hated. Do I have some that I love more than others? Absolutely. As with every recipe that I find on the internet, I do adjust them to my taste. You don't have to have macro-friendly food. You don't have to eat any miracle diet food to lose weight. You don't have to do any of that. I just like that it makes my life easier. <laughs> I definitely want to show you some of the recipes that I'm going to be using this week. I'm using all macro-friendly food recipes this week, but all of them have free versions on Elisa's Instagram. So I will be sharing those down in the comments with you. And I hope you find some recipe inspiration that looks like something that you'd love to try with a high protein twist. So we're going to start with a high protein Monte Cristo French toast egg bake. These eggs were so frustrating. They kept cracking all over the place. Quick tip, use your eggshells to retrieve your eggshells. We're gonna do six regular eggs, pop the yolks and get them good and combined first. Then we're gonna add two cups of high protein milk and then six egg whites, which is 12 tablespoons, which is three quarters of a cup. Recipe doesn't call for it, but I always add a little bit of salt, a splash of vanilla that I never measure. It's just a teaspoon. You're gonna incorporate 75 grams of vanilla protein powder. I always find the easiest way to do that is with an immersion blender or an egg frother. Even then you're gonna have some lumps. It's okay, just set it aside they'll work themselves out. Hopefully this part isn't as hard to watch as it was to do. This was a very fresh loaf of bread because I had just bought it from the store and it was still warm when I picked it up. And so it was really, really hard to cut. This is a lot easier when the bread is a day old. I mean, it is basically a bread pudding, so it's always better to do with stale bread, but this is what I had. I didn't think I had sue me, whatever. So basically you're just gonna take an entire loaf of French bread and you're gonna cut it up into chunks. This ended up getting all compacted because no matter how gentle I tried to be, I, it just, it got all squished because it was warm and soft and fresh and that's just what I get for not using stale bread. So if you can buy this loaf of bread a day or two before you make it, it'll be even better. But this is what I had, this is what I did. So I'm just gonna cut it into long strips and then I'm gonna cut it into little chunks until I have the whole loaf of bread done. So next we're gonna start layering this thing up. Ideally you would do this the night before you're gonna bake it, but I needed to bake this that night so I'm doing it about six to eight hours ahead of time. It needs to soak for a minimum of four hours, but it's better when you do it overnight. So anyway, you're gonna take half your bread, put that in the bottom of the container, and then you're gonna layer it with half of your diced ham or Canadian bacon. You guys saw I decided to do the diced ham and honestly, this worked really, really well. I will probably always and forever do it this way again, just because it was so much more convenient and cheaper. And then you're gonna use a total of four ounces of cheese. Traditionally, a Monte Cristo uses Swiss cheese. I do not like Swiss cheese, I think it's gross. So instead of Swiss, I use Monterey Jack cheese. I just like it a lot better. So you're gonna shred half your cheese onto this layer, and then you're gonna repeat the layers and then once you have all of your bread, ham, and cheese, you're gonna pour the egg mixture on top of that, cover the whole thing in foil, and then you're gonna let it rest, like I said, ideally overnight, but at least four hours before you pop it in the oven at 350 degrees. You're gonna bake it covered for an hour and then remove the foil and bake it for another five minutes or until the top is golden brown. Morning guys, don't mind me. I'm just getting ready to eat breakfast. I have my Monte Cristo warming up in my air fryer. I popped it in the microwave for about 45 seconds and then stuck it in my air fryer for about 10 minutes at 350 just to get a little crispy on top. And in the meantime, I'm gonna start throwing dinner together because tonight's dinner is a partial slow cook meal, partial not slow cook meal. We're doing barbecue pulled pork mac and cheese, which I've had before and it is delicious. But last time I made it, I did it with pork loin, which is what the recipe called for. Sorry, my butt just closed the dishwasher. So last time I did it the way the recipe called for, which was with pork loin. And pork loin, I am not a fan of. It's dry. I know it's low in fat. That's why it's so dry. But there's another cut of pork that is just as lean, but for whatever reason is not as dry, is way more tender, pork tenderloin. It's usually cheaper. Well, not usually. It's usually about the same price. When it's on sale, it's cheaper. And I just prefer it. 
way more over pork loin. So anytime I find a recipe that calls for pork loin in any circumstance, I always substitute for pork tenderloin. So I don't have a lot of time this morning before I have to go to work. I have an early day, which is not normal for me. So the thing I love about slow cooker meals is, is that no matter how tired I am at the end of the day, I'm kind of locked into dinner because part of it has already been cooking all day. So I'm less likely to make an excuse to go out to dinner, which is a problem for me. I have a tendency to like to go out to eat and we do build eating out into our budget. It's just separate from our grocery budget. So I just want to clarify, yes, we have a hundred dollar a week grocery budget, but we also go out to eat three times a week total. So that's separate from our grocery budget. I know not everybody has that. And obviously if you don't eat out at all, your grocery budget is going to be higher, but overall between the grocery and the eating out budget, you will pay much less because when we eat out, it's not cheap. I'm going to throw this together real quick. Another quick tip. If you're somebody who has limited amounts of time in the morning, most of the time I will prep my insert for my slow cooker and I just use my pressure cooker on the slow cooker setting because I have a very small kitchen. I don't have room for both, uh, but I will prep the insert with everything that I need to slow cook. And then I'll just in the morning, throw that in and turn it on this morning. I had enough time that I just decided to wait and do it all this morning. The other thing I'll do is if like, if it's a searing recipe like this one is, is I'll like throw the sauces together or the seasonings together the night before. So that all I have to do is sear, season, dump in the sauce and then we're done. But this recipe uses store-bought barbecue sauce. So there really wasn't any of that to do. I am using a store-bought rub instead of the seasoning that she used. I used her seasoning last time and it was delicious. I just happen to have this in my fridge and it's basically all the same ingredients that are in her rub recipe to begin with. So, so I'm going to get that preheating so that I can sear my meat. Two pounds of pork loin, pork tenderloin. This is more, closer to like two and a half pounds, but it's going to be fine. If you're searing your meat, always dry it first. You will get a much better sear. The recipe calls for olive oil. I always use avocado oil because it has a higher smoke point. And I just don't love the flavor of avocado, I mean, olive oil. Pop about a tablespoon of oil. I usually go a little light on the oil this week. I'm not worried about it because I'm in maintenance. Also, I used to worry about taking off the silver skin and stuff on these things until I took a barbecue class when they were like, yeah, it's, you're not, it's, don't worry about it. And then I'd stopped and I've never noticed it. So also the instructions, will tell you to season before you sear. I'm not a fan of doing that. I prefer to season after I sear because there are ingredients in that seasoning like brown sugar and uh, garlic that can burn. So I prefer to sear first, season after, uh, but you can do what you want. It's your kitchen. Nobody's going to stop you. I'm gonna get plenty of contact on the bottom of that pan. I'll wash my hands real quick with all that meat juice off of me. Okay, the other tip about using pork loin or pork tenderloin is that the meat fibers on those roasts run tip to tip, so they're very long. So if you don't cut those down, it's gonna be very stringy, which is not a texture that I enjoy. So after I sear these and I take them out, I'm gonna cut them into shorter sections, like maybe inch and a half to two inches, so just chunks. And then I'll put them back in there, season them up, throw the barbecue sauce on, and then put the lid on and set it on low for six to eight hours so that then tonight I can make my mac and cheese and shove it in my face. A lot of her recipes were written back when G Hughes was real big. I'm not a huge fan of G Hughes barbecue sauce. I don't know what it is about the flavor, the artificial sweetener they use, whatever. But in my opinion, sweet baby rays, no sugar added. This, I can barely tell the difference between this and their regular barbecue sauce. And I love sweet baby rays. So this will always and forever, always and forever. This will be my barbecue sauce. How are we doing in here? Ooh, that's nice. That's nice. About you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna go shy on the barbecue sauce because sure. Wow, that seems like a lot. 
So the recipe calls for two cups of barbecue sauce. So they want you to put one and three quarter cups in the, bar in the barbecue sauce, in the slow cooker with the pork, and then another quarter of a cup to reserve to drizzle on top. I'm gonna just go one cup in here. That might be a mistake, but I think last time I went shy because it felt like a lot and it was fine. So that just seems like a lot. Maybe I'll go one and a half. And take these bad boys out. Oh man, that's pretty. Okay. Not worried about letting these rest because they're not like fully cooked. So I'm just gonna like, that's the size chunk that I'm putting them in. And I'm just gonna put them right back in so that I don't have super long shreds of meat later. Excuse you, sir. I do not require your assistance. Do a liberal sprinkle. Toss them around in it. Just like a dream to me. Yep, that's gonna be stuck in my head. That somehow came true every day of me your own special way. And then I'm gonna drizzle this barbecue sauce on the top. Oh yeah, that was good. All right, I'm gonna bring you closer, to Tony Danza. Show you what this looks like. Where's my phone? Oh, it's in my pocket. <laughs> so that's what we're looking like inside. And I'm gonna just pop the lid on, let it go for six to eight hours, and we'll finish up the mac tonight. The mac tonight. <laughs> so the other must have with any Monte Cristo, traditionally you enjoy it with raspberry jam on top. I am a blackberry fan. I only need a tablespoon, not a lot. A little goes a long way. 18 grams of this. And then I'm gonna thin it out with a little splash of water to turn it into like a blackberry syrup. And then I'll dip my Monte Cristo in there. So like, that's it. Just like a little splish, but you can't see that, but it's like a little splash of water, like maybe a teaspoon. Do that for about 15 seconds. Wooshy, golden brown and delicious. Recipe also calls for it to be covered by a little bit of powdered sugar. And again, a little goes a long way. Sprinky sprink. It's more for decoration than flavor, let's be honest, because that's not gonna do a dang thing to make it sweet, but. But look how cute it is. It's so pretty. Gonna give her a little stir. Oh, well, that may have been too much water. Nope, it's perfect. Woo! Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bite. And I don't know if you can see, but there's like all the little layers all the little layers with the cheese and the ham in the middle. Dip it in that black butter syrup. It's sweet and savory and crunchy and gooey from the cheese. But it's like all of the good things. And there's tons of protein in there. So delicious. You could add the protein up the protein even more by putting some Oikos triple zero on top of that with the blackberry syrup. I'm sure that would be delicious, but I'm having a couple of much higher calorie dinners this week. So that's what I opted for instead of like gilding the lily on some other things. Hi right, baby. I'm gonna eat my breakfast. This is gonna cook away all day and I'll see you guys later tonight to throw together the rest of dinner. So when I got home, this is what the pork looked like. Basically, it was completely falling apart. I just kind of broke it up into chunks and then I took my tongs and I stirred it around. You can always use like a hand mixer if you want to or a potato masher, that also works. But I just stirred it around and then let it sit in the sauce and soak up all those juices. Today was a long day. We had the solar eclipse today here in Texas and I worked a long day and then I got home and I had to finish our income taxes and a couple of other things. And then I just started making dinner and completely forgot. So basically I followed the recipe, except instead of cooking the noodles separately, I took four cups of chicken stock and I boiled the macaroni in the, the chicken stock and I let it go for the full nine minutes that the package instructions 
asked for and it was you know perfectly al dente at that point and then i just made the sauce in the noodles so i added the two tablespoons of butter and let it melt and then slowly sprinkled in and stirred in a quarter cup of flour a teaspoon of salt half a teaspoon of pepper half a teaspoon of ground mustard and then i sprinkled in some worcestershire and i stirred that around and just kind of let it cook off the flour a little bit and then I slowly poured in two cups of chicken broth, stirred that up, you know, as I went, just like you do to make a cream sauce, added two cups of my 2% Lutopia. It's like the Fairlife, the ATB brand of Fairlife, which the recipe does not call for high protein milk. I just use that because I like it and it adds some extra protein. And then stir that, bring it to a boil, let it boil for about a minute. And then you stir in two cups of reduced fat cheddar cheese. I shredded my own. The recipe calls for pre-shredded cheddar cheese, but I just like how it melts better when it's, I shred it myself. And then half a cup of, it calls for Parmesan cheese, but I do Parmesan and Romano blend. And then you stir that up until it's totally melted and that's it. It's like the easiest mac and cheese ever. This is almost a pound of food. It's 15.1 ounces, so it is plenty of food. 9.83 ounces of macaroni, 5.27 ounces of the pork, and then I put a little bit, I drizzled a little bit more of the barbecue sauce on top, and I also sprinkled a little bit more of that rub on top just to gild the lily, because I'm fancy like that. I have had this before, but like I said, I did it with pork loin before, and I gave this pulled pork a little bit of a taste test when I was pulling it, and literally like, you saw how it was falling apart with the tongs. I just took the tongs in there and stirred it around and it all just like shredded up like this. So cheesy, meaty goodness. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's from the barbecue sauce, but it even tastes a little smoky. That pork is not dry at all. This, the flavor is delicious. This is, mm -hmm, yep. Mm. And it makes a ton of food. That makes eight portions. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention, I also heated up some green beans that I had made last week and I'm gonna be making more of these uh, this week again. Basically all this is is just uh, canned Italian cut green beans and I drained them and then added a cup of chicken stock, a sprinkle of zero calorie brown sugar substitute, and then I added in a sprinkle of Tony Satchery's and a little splash of red wine vinegar in there. And I let them just kind of boil just to let all the flavors get to know each other. And they are so freaking good. It's like a sweet and sour, tangy, delicious Southern green bean type thing, but like very low calorie because I didn't add any fat to it, no bacon to it, nothing like that. And that 28 ounce can, I just divided into three servings. So it's an easy green vegetable. And of course, canned veggies are always very budget friendly and they never go bad. So make you some of those. They are delicious. Yum. I'm gonna go finish eating this because I am so excited. That's pretty much it for this video. I hope you found it useful and that you found some tips to make eating a high protein diet a little bit more affordable for you. If you're somebody that struggles with finding ideas for food and you need a little bit more meal plan inspiration, please feel free to check out my Buy Me A Coffee page where my monthly supporters do get a copy of my weekly meal plan along with links to all of the recipes that I'm using. And if I am using a macro-friendly food recipe, I always provide you with a free recipe alternative. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like, say hi to me down in the comments, and let me know if you have any tips for keeping a high protein diet budget friendly. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. We're on a journey, looking back on the things that we've taken for granted, but feels like we're learning to be better without what's been holding us back.